Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about the experience of the Rhine Commission, International Commission, the protection of the Rhine. But I will do that in a kind of historical perspective. Last year and this year, as Alastair said, we received a lot of international recognition for the work that the ICPR did over the last 64 years. The ICPR exists already 64 years. We received uh, a little bit more than a year ago, in September I think it was, 2013, the uh, first European River Prize. And about four weeks ago, the ICPR also received the uh, International Tees River Prize. Before I go into the historical perspective, I would like to show you very sh briefly what we are going to do with the money, because there is a money, sum of money collected to this, uh, connected to these, these prizes, what we are going to do with the money we received. For the, for the prize money of the 2013 River Prize, we are developing right now a website specially for children. <coughs> and this is the opening page of that website. It is not yet ready. It functions in, uh, partly on a test site, but only in Dutch. Uh, problem in the Rhine Commission is that we, everything we have to do, we have to do in four languages. German, French, Dutch, and English. So the website will also be in these four languages for two uh, age groups of children, 8 to 11 and 12 to 14. The second part of the prize money was uh, earmarked for twinning. Um, together with the UNECE, Commission for uh, the Water Co uh, Convention, we uh, developed what I could call a multiple twinning. We are going to use the um, UNECE platform as a uh, platform for twinning instead of a one-to-one -one river connection uh, as twinning. Uh, just two weeks ago, we had the first um, event on that, and it is our intention to continue on this way of twinning, on this multiple twinning approach, also with the, uh, the money, uh, the twinning part of the Tees River Prize. Now I will step into the historical perspective, but I will do that starting with the principles for effective joint bodies on transboundary water cooperation that are at present in developing in the UNECE framework. Um, some of the key points, I think it's, it's about 20 different principles. Some of the key points of these principles are broad competence of a joint body, clearly defined tasks and powers, facilitation of assessment of impacts, and adequate, stable, and timely financing and human resources in countries and in the Secretariat. How is, does did this, these key principles compare to the Rhine? Then I think you can say that the 1999 Rhine Convention is the instrument for implementation of integrated water resource management. It follows, in fact, most of the principles of the UNECE. However, what the Convention does not have is a very powerful Commission. In fact, that power is embedded, is, is getting from the national and EU legislation. So the Commission, the Rhine Commission as such, does not have a strong power. Nevertheless, it achieved the results it achieves because it started already in 1950, long before these very strong and powerful European instruments were there. How did that, how did that, uh, how did we achieve that? As I said, the first meeting took place on the 11th of July, 1950 in Basel. And the report on the, on the right side is the original of the report of that meeting. It was an initiative of the Netherlands because we, I'm Dutch, you can probably hear, we were suffering a very poor quality of the Rhine, of the water. 
which was used for drinking water purposes, especially, for instance, in the Rotterdam area. And we were looking support by Switzerland. And why Switzerland, you're asking maybe? Switzerland was neutral during the Second World War. So we are trying to combine these two, in, and the, this uh, initiative uh, invited, uh, especially Germany and France, and we had a first meeting on the 11th of July, 1950. During that meeting, and if you would read the report, you can see these key elements uh, in that report. Um, in fact, they agreed upon how to get agreement on what the problem is. And before doing that, the problem was water quality, not ecology, etc. That wasn't in, in, the, in the discussion yet. You have to analyze water pollution. So you have to develop uh, monitoring programs and analytical methods. And you have to exchange data. And you have to trust the data you exchange. And you also have to develop a program of measures. Or in any case, develop protection measures that you can take. That first meeting was followed by a long period. It took 16 years before they first drafted a, a legal instrument, the first Rhine Convention, 1963. Uh, building trust, again, uh, having in mind that this took place five years after the end of the Second World War, trust wasn't really what was happening between these parties. They had very detailed, when you look at the reports of that, of that period, very detailed technical discussions on analytical programs, monitoring programs, uh, but also on best available technology. That discussion started during that period. How to define best available technology. But when you look at that period, water quality did not really improve. So it, it did not really result until the, 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 the 70s and 80s in a real improvement. But that, the key for that was a major disaster. And now, unfortunately, I have to step out of the, because the, where it is? The film didn't really work. Formerly, distrust was an obstruction to water protection. There was concurrence between the states. They considered the Rhine to be a waste bin, and it became a sewer. Along the Rhine, an industrial density developed as nowhere else in the world. In particular, the chemical industry and the metallurgy industry benefited from the Rhine. The river gave them a possibility for considerable economic growth. After an accident, their behavior changed. On November 1st, 1986, a warehouse burned down at the Sandos Agui near Basel. The firefighting water washed up to 30 tons of pesticides into the Rhine. Fish and other organisms died along hundreds of kilometers of the Rhine. People protested vehemently. This was a historic opportunity. Government ministers adopted the Rhine Action Program. They wanted the Rhine to become clean enough for salmon to return to the river. Formerly, distrust was an obstruction to water protection. There was concurrence between the states. They considered the Rhine to be a waste bin, and it became a sewer. Yeah, I managed. Sorry for this uh, little escape from the PowerPoint. Um, this was the well-famous Sando accident in 1986 on the 1st of November. Um, you saw a lot of events during that, uh, uh, that little movie uh, of that accident. One of the elements you saw was public pressure. People went on the street to blame the chemical industry because the chemical industry at that period had a very bad name. But also you saw a, a, a part of a ministerial meeting. In half a year time, 
three ministerial meetings took place, and they, the ministers there had a lot of political courage. They had a very high political ambition. Of course, environment was high on the agenda at that moment. Uh, 1st of November 1986 took place some months after the April Chernobyl disaster. So environment was already high on the agenda. And of course, you have to use that. What ministers um, agreed upon was that they had a joint problem. A key element in the first ministerial meeting a week after, the, after that accident was that they agreed that this could have happened to all of us. So it's not, not, not blaming the Switzerland for being a naughty boy, naughty boy. This could have happened to all of us. And in a way, uh, some years ago, we had a fire in uh, Moerdijk in the Netherlands. The Dutch people will re remember that. That was a fire that had quite similarities, quite uh, big similarities with the fire in Sando, also a warehouse of chemicals. This political ambition they had uh, resulted in a shift from very detailed technical discussions, best available technology, etc., very big documents, to a, setting a very ambitious long-term goal. The Solman should come back. It had completely disappeared from the Rhine in the 50s. It was a very important fish, but had completely disappeared. We should have it back. Nobody knew at that moment how to get it back, but still they said it should come back. So they set a point for the future without knowing how to get, how to get there. So the Solman, why the Solman? It was a flagship um, for restoration of the Rhine. And in addition to that, they, re they agreed upon a substantial reduction of inputs of substances. A substantial in this uh, means a 50% reduction. So just 50%, not just 5 or 10, but 50% reduction in uh, a few years. So a very high level political ambition. The Rhine Action Plan um, embedded this, uh, this vision, this new vision, this vision to integrate water quality and ecology. Um, a key element in the further success was also the fact that industry, the chemical industry, which had a very bad name at that, in that period, they took their responsibility. Right now, we have a an, an Rhine alarm program for accidents. When something happens in the Rhine in an industry, they report that themselves, so they don't hide it anymore. Disaster, management by disaster. A second one came in 93, 95. I, I could have shown pictures of that, but I didn't do. Um, again, this flood accident resulted in a high level political ambition uh, in terms of flood reduction, damage reduction, damage risk reduction, I should say, as, as one, of the, one of the examples. And then this uh, experience the, gained by the ICPR was um, put in an action plan and later on embedded in the 1999 Rhine Convention, which I started my, my talk about. At the same time, this, the last years in the, in the 90s, the Water Framework Directive was developed, entered into force in the year 2000. Experience of the ICPR was, uh, well, I could say fundamental to the thinking, which is now in the uh, Water Framework Directive and later on also in the Floods Directive. Very briefly about the ICPR as such, it's a very decentralized organization. It is as such a political framework. We have no possibility for sanctions. That, as I said, is provided for by the, uh, by the EU legislation and also by national legislation um, because of the fact that Switzerland 
contracting party and the, under the ICPR is not a member of the EU. We discuss, still we agree, and that's the reason why I say that all agreements are taken by consensus. There is no obligation to implement, but there is an obligation to report on implementation. But still, it works. And we have a very small neutral secretariat. And that's the reason why the annual budget is as small as it is uh, indicated. It's only 1.2 million euro. That includes my salary. And of course, some other course as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, very briefly, the, the organization. We work in, uh, in, in three levels. Uh, the plenary commission meeting, a strategic level underneath, and main work is done in three working groups, flood, quality, and ecology, with a whole series of working groups. And of course, not only the EEA, also we have some data management. So in summary, um, the different phases of the work in the, of the, the, the lifetime of the ICPR. Key element in the beginning was building trust and mutual understanding and the development and we are still using that the, the key elements of the of the monitoring uh, program that was developed in this period we are still using that and we're still exchanging data then as I showed the turning point was the uh, the Sando accident in uh, 86 from short-term technical discussions to a very long-term very high-level political ambition and then after the after 86 the integration of uh, of all inter of all relevant uh, policy fields including later on also the uh, the floods etc at present um, what i'm saying here is that we are trying to find a balance between political ambition and legal requirements and enforcement particularly in the first round of the development of the water framework directive <laughs> We, in the Secretariat, and not only there, had the impression that countries didn't show all their cards anymore. Because they were fearing the legal stick behind the door. So the political ambition got uh, dissolved, in fact, disappeared. Um, and of course, I'm now not talking about the, 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 the concept which is embedded in the, in the Water Framework Directive, but the, the legal pillar it's, it's, it is grounded, it is uh, supported on. Um, in, now, in, now we are developing the, the second round uh, River Basin Management Plan. We have the feeling that it is disappearing a little, that, that, that we are better in balance, but still, I couldn't imagine setting the ambitious goals that were set in the past that we would be setting them now. Because uh, countries fear infringement procedures. Now, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the Commission. And as I understood, they are not in the room right now, so I can say this without any risk. Um, for the future, um, still, we have to do a lot. And I summarize that into the phrase that the, the question is how to correct the impact of the missing environmental management of the past. When you look at the southern part of the Rhine, with, uh, which is canalized, which has a whole series of um, uh, power dams, uh, power generation dams. We recently had a workshop on the most southern French dam. And the, one of the options for solving the problems there in terms of continuity is building a tunnel, building a fish ladder in the form of a tunnel. Just imagine. That's the only way to solve it there. And of course, it mentioned before, uh, how should we take account of the uncertainties we, know, we don't know about the impact of climate change. We even don't know, we are uncertain about the uncertainties, put it that way. From Sando and also from the floodings, um, 
the key lesson is that you also should that you always should try to turn something into a positive uh, into something positive so don't sit and cry but step up and do something positive when something disastrous happens and mentioned before bottom up top down in terms of working methods and with that I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you.